hey, 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 hey. So check this out. I found this on my shorts feed today, and uh, some people are so deluded by current events that they forget about the history of this country. And this is an example of a gentleman who's obviously forgotten the purpose of the U.S. Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and how this country was started. So if you're interested, check it out. Colorado Judge, Judge Sarah Wallace, has ruled on the facts, on the evidence, that Donald Trump engaged in an insurrection against the United States. But Judge Wallace went on to conclude that because the office of the presidency is not, quote, an office under the United States, close quote, Trump is not disqualified from holding office again in the future, even though he engaged in an insurrection against the United States. It kind of makes sense, right? But not really. I don't, I don't get it. Maybe she's crazy too. Very hard to accept, and I do not accept, that the drafters of the Constitution believe that a president of the United States could engage in an insurrection, could try to overthrow American democracy. Isn't this kind of the same thing that the men who signed the Declaration of Independence, our founding fathers, did? Uh, when they sent the Declaration to Great Britain, they probably said over in Great Britain, they probably said, oh my God, over in the colonies, they're, they're doing an insurrection. They're trying to overthrow our authority. Uh, I mean, isn't that kind of what happened? Uh, and then they were elected president. And that person would not be disqualified from heading up the very government. Wait for it. Wait for it. He tried to overthrow. That doesn't make any damn sense. What is the purpose of the Second Amendment? You might like this a little bit, but the next one's better. The purpose of the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution is a subject of ongoing debate and legal interpretation. However, the two primary interpretations of the amendment's purpose revolve around the protection of individual rights and the preservation of well-regulated militias. Individual Right Theory The individual right theory asserts that the Second Amendment guarantees an individual's right to possess firearms for traditionally lawful purposes, such as self-defense, hunting, and recreational shooting. Proponents of this view argue that the amendment's language, specifically the phrase, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, clearly establishes an individual right. They also emphasize the historical context of the amendment, pointing to the founding fathers' concerns about a strong central government and their desire to empower citizens to defend themselves against potential tyranny. Can you tell me what the oath of office is? This is the good one. This is the one I want to get away for. Check this out. An oath of office is a formal promise to uphold the duties and responsibilities of a particular position. It is typically taken by elected officials, government employees, and members of the military upon assuming office. The specific wording of the oath may vary depending on the position, but it generally includes a pledge to support the Constitution, uphold the laws, and serve the public interest. In the United States, the President of the United States is required to take the following oath of office. I do solemnly swear, or affirm, that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States, and will to the best of my ability, preserve, protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. The oath of office is a solemn and important ritual that serves several purposes. It affirms the legitimacy of the office holder. By taking the oath, the office holder is publicly acknowledging their authority and their responsibility to the people. Establishes a commitment to the Constitution and the laws. The oath serves as a reminder that the office holder is bound by the law and must uphold the principles of the Constitution. Promotes accountability. The oath is a public promise that can be used to hold the office holder accountable for their actions. So I'm going to be really honest. I'm going to write my name on the ballot uh, this election. I don't really know who's running besides Trump and Biden, um, but uh, I'm not going to vote for either one of them. I'm not picking a side because honestly, I think that either side's uh, maybe not the best choice for how I think our country needs to be ran. I will say this, when it comes to the insurrection, then indict him and, and have him impeached and incarcerated and, and all these uh, different
different proceedings that are going on in court for Donald Trump. I will say this. When he became president, he took an oath of office to uphold the Constitution. The Second Amendment was written to the Constitution because our forefathers, our founding fathers, wanted armed militias and civilians and people in power to be able to have the authority to, if need be, combat tyranny from invading foreign forces or from inside the United States government. Now, you can call it an insurrection. You can call it... uh, civil unrest, you can call it an upheaval, you can call it anarchy, an attempt to possibly fight tyranny, or to overthrow a corrupt government, or to uphold the Constitution. I mean, it all depends on how you look at it, and both sides have me so confused right now, I'm not voting for either one, because I think it's all a whole bunch of BS. But, I will say this, whenever it comes time for elections, feel free to write my name in. Christopher Johnson for president. I believe in putting money back into schools, creating blue collar jobs, and the damn constitution, it it holds weight in any decision that needs to be made in the government. And most importantly, I want to go back to saying the Pledge of Allegiance at schools. So if you're cool with this, give me a vote. Why not? 